Good afternoon. Um, you are here at the uh, panel on Los Angeles. <laughs> Anybody here from LA? Yeah. Represent. <laughs> I, I, I would throw a West Coast sign, but I think it's probably forbidden on this particular yeah. lawn. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're here to talk about uh, Los Angeles as a, a city, as a geographical area, as a place to build and grow uh, new sorts of innovative businesses. And I, I just want to, my name is uh, Jonathan Gold, I'm the restaurant critic for the Los Angeles Times. And I want to start talking about a little bit about a, um, a, a newish restaurant that I've spent a certain amount of time hanging out at and writing about, which is a uh, place called Local. It's on 103rd Street in Watts, very close to Jordan High School, where, in fact, one of our panelists went, uh, both went to high school and grew up. Um, it's on a block that is probably better known for what happened to it during the uh, riots in 1965 than for anything that's happened on it since. It's around the corner from the headquarters of the Grape Street Crips. Um, it, it is or was certainly one of the highest crime neighborhoods in the state of California. and. These two chef entrepreneurs, um, Daniel Patterson, uh, who owned the restaurant called Qua in San Francisco that uh, has two Michelin stars and is considered one of the best restaurants in the United States. It's, it's, it's avant-garde. It deals with uh, food that's been grown by and large by the people who are growing oh, running it, and it's a, a spectacular restaurant. He left that more or less to co-found this with uh, Roy Choi, who um, is somebody else who has a background in oak cuisine. He uh, was first in his class from the um, California, from the uh, Culinary Academy of America, and um, left a career cooking in hotel restaurants and doing oak cuisine things to start uh, the Kogi trucks, which is basically ground zero of the new food truck movement in America. Um, he owns uh, uh, several other restaurants, but he also has put a lot of his career on hold in order to open this place in Watts. And the idea is uh, to have healthy cuisine, to have cu cooking that really tastes good, but to have cuisine that exists within the context of the community that lives there now, which is to say uh, almost all Latino and um, African American. And the lines have been spectacular. The neighborhood has taken to it. And it's a sort of glimmer of commercial life in a neighborhood that hasn't seen a commercial glimmer of life in a really long time. Businesses can make a difference in communities. They can make a difference um, with food deserts, and they can make people happy because they're doing something that they can, you know, taste and smell and walk by every day, and it's something that's theirs because it's in their community. And I think everybody on this panel today is doing things that are, if not exactly the same as that, is also bringing good things to the community and good things to Los Angeles and using our city as a basis of entrepreneurship um, that I think that all of us in the United States could probably stand to learn from. Uh, there's a Yale Aflalo, who's the founder and CEO of Reformation, which is a fashion label dedicated to the idea of sustainable clothing based in and manufactured in Los Angeles. Uh, Yale, a native Angelino, is known for what is sometimes called cool girl style, as you can see, <laughs> based on and originally repurposed from recycled vintage clothes. Um, they're known to be really comfortable and really sexy. 
uh, and they're made sustainably from either dead stock fabric, uh, which is to say fabric that's been manufactured that wouldn't be used for anything else, and uh, sustainable fabrics out, um, out of you know, materials that are able to be recycled and are grown easily enough. Um, and if you see a Reformation dress at Coachella, and you will see hundreds, if not thousands, of Reformation dresses at Coachella, um, you'll, you won't recognize the maker necessarily, but you'll definitely recognize the style. Here we have uh, Christina Holly, who likes to be known as Z, um, head of the Make It in LA, of the Make It in LA initiative, uh, which connects and celebrates uh, the United States largest community of makers. You have 1,600 businesses? Oh, no, we, we surveyed 1,600 surveyed businesses 1600 and then launched business. it from that. Okay. Um, and she has the uh, weekly Art of Manufacturing podcast, which you should listen to if you haven't. Recent shows have showcased a uh, dairy entrepreneur, um, a mother and daughter skincare team, and a, a designer who designs clothes for people with disabilities, which is something that I had never even thought about before. Um, she works or worked very closely with uh, Mayor Garcetti's office in Los Angeles. And she's the creator of TEDx USC, which was the first um, offshoot of TED Talks. We, we have a whole lot of radio that, that comes from her. Um, we have uh, Brian Mullins, head of Dacry. Is it? It's pretty, it's like the drink? Like the drink. Which is an OC-based uh, virtual reality startup that it, L LA, LA. It's LA. Oh, very downtown. Good. I stand very happily corrected. <laughs> <laughs> that that aims to be a uh, platform like Facebook or Twitter. We we make augmented reality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we do a lot of it uh, for enterprise applications. So a lot of times uh, people think about the entertainment aspects of of augmented reality, but we're actually making augmented reality products that support people making their products. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the thing that struck me as really cool uh, about what you're doing is you're trying to make virtual reality as unremarkable as like an Instagram photo. Just something that, th that is there and that works. It, it, will, it will someday be that uh, um, you, know, you won't even use the word augmented reality that would be like calling the internet the information superhighway. It'll just be what it is. <laughs> and we all used to do that. And uh, you also work a lot with 3D printing, or have, and, um, and I think what you call 4D. Yes, yeah, for, for uh, you, you know, those of uh, people that aren't uh, familiar with augmented reality, it puts the content into your world. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of what we're doing with, um, with, with that content and, and having it in your space um, you know, we refer to as 4D, and, and, and you know, you have 2D, you look at a screen, 3D, you kind of uh, simulating it on a screen, but 4D is when it really comes into your world in space and time. I mean, the one thing I do know th is that if you haven't downloaded the Dacry Anatomy app, which ex it, it explores the human heart in almost scary detail, then you've really got to download it after the talk. It's something really special. Thank you. And last but certainly not least is uh, Oscar Menivar, uh, who is the tech consultant for the Reardon Foundation, uh, advising on how to adapt technology for the classroom. He grew up in Los Angeles, so you were born in Central America. Uh, went to Jordan High School in Watts and later taught at Jordan High School, which is a school with a 55% dropout rate that he's working very hard to make sure it goes much, much lower. Uh, he's worked developing a peer-to-peer -peer curriculum that teaches programming, but also business development and public speaking skills. He hopes to teach and inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. And what we all have in common is 
Los Angeles. Y Yale, how does Los Angeles enable you to do what you do? Well, we originally started the company in New York. Um, and when we decided to do our manufacturing in-house, it became pretty clear we couldn't do that in Manhattan. Um, and so we moved to Los Angeles, where you have um, really diverse workforces, you have very um, helpful government, and we were able to set up a factory, and we manufacture our clothes sustainably in LA. People always say that Los Angeles is too expensive, but we've shown with you and with um, we're probably not allowed to say the words American Apparel on this particular stage in this particular venture. But uh, what, what are the advantages of having a manufacturing base in Los Angeles? Um, well, LA is very spread out, and there's lots of areas with tons of space. There's a lot of manufacturing going on there. In addition, you have very diverse um, groups of people. So you have people from entertainment, you have people from technology, um, you have people with really amazing sewing skills, and so you have all of that melting pot, and it, it fosters innovation and it fosters manufacturing. I, I know you think, it, it's almost like what you do to think about the advantages of uh, manufacturing in Los Angeles, but... Um, what are, do you have any quick thoughts on that? Well, I think what's really unique about what uh, both Brian and Yale are doing, it's, it really illustrates the intersections of all the diverse backgrounds and in industries in LA. So um, wh when, you're, when you're thinking about sort of culture and manufacturing and um, you know, community building, and that's sort of, that's where uh, innovation happens at these intersections. And so Yael is really showing that, that aspect. And then of course you're talking about entertainment, AR, uh, technology, uh, and that's sort of Daiquiri is really showing that. So I think that for me, one of the most uh, fascinating and really powerful things about LA is the diversity both of the industry and also the people. When we surveyed businesses in LA um, about creating and making, we found that uh, nearly half of the businesses that we surveyed were either minority or women, uh, women owned. Uh, and so it really shows a very different face of entrepreneurship than what we see in the media. Are you finding that in uh, your virtual reality thing that by dint of having people, uh, a diverse workforce and a diverse group of people around you to t test things on that your product is different than it would be if you made it in Phoenix or Houston? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think that uh, bringing in uh, a diversity of perspective uh, helps make any product better. You know, um, a, a lot of times, um, you know, especially in, in what we do, um, augmented reality has not ever been done before in, in a really big way. Um, and so we'll, we'll focus and, 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 and get together uh, experts on each of the technologies and, and develop things that seem, seem very cool and, and really magical to us. And, and then you get to show it to different people, um, you know, people like you find in L.A., um, that, that can give you feedback and, and, and help you make it in a way that, that, that weaves these all together into um, you know, uh, something that's, that's better than, than you can do without that. Yeah. Well, Los Angeles has always had this gift, I think, uh, possibly because of the, it's the center of the entertainment industry, but this gift of speaking to the world. Like in, in music, you know, you could talk about like a, a New York sound, you can talk about a, Los, uh, a Nashville sound, or you could talk about a, um, you know, a, dir a Dirty South sound. But in a lot of ways, what comes out of Los Angeles is, it's just music. It doesn't necessarily have a regional th thing because what's regional about Los Angeles is something that everybody has absorbed from television and movies and music. Do you think there's that universality to it? I also think that it's, uh, LA is a microcosm of the world. Yeah. So it pulls together all these different cultures. I think there's something like 40 different nationalities where the second largest population in the world is in LA. And so it, it, it rises and it causes uh, new creativity to come uh, out of that, and then it also means that uh, LA is a huge market that enables us to to reach and test and iterate on our innovations as well. I also, can I, if you don't mind me saying, oh, I also um, believe so. Um, with us, Urban TXT, Teens Exploring Technology, uh, after spending seven years in, in 
and being able to teach kids how to code and become entrepreneurship, I think that the beauty of LA that we're starting to find is that more and more teens from the, from the inner city and more and more teens from poor and working class communities are starting to innovate. And the more resources we're starting to provide to them, the more they're starting to come up with their own solutions for their own communities. So for example, um, not just music, um, you know, we find that um, the kids that we take to, through our entrepreneurship program, they're identifying very unique, very unique problems in their communities. For example, one of the kids decided that um, he wanted to bring Wi-Fi to the park in South LA, and he's trying to figure out how to connect um, different tools so he can expand Wi-Fi at the parks and also in, in communities like Watts that doesn't have access to technology. Um, other kids are looking at gamification, right? Gamification, how can gaming improve learning and how can gaming improve um, the new way the kids are gonna learn in the inner city? So for example, another, another um, discovery that we found is that a lot of schools um, tell kids you should do SAT or prep for the SAT, but they didn't know how to study for the SAT. So at this point, they're developing games for them to study. So I think innovation with, with the beauty of LA is that we're creating this hub, right? This technology hub of innovation of people who are coming from minority backgrounds, especially in South LA. So I think that's also something that's gonna be happening in LA pretty soon that, that we can look forward to in the future. I think it's a, it's a good point too to, to remember that um, you know, people often think of the entertainment industry in LA, but uh, the, you know, a LA has a really strong history of technology and aerospace and science uh, you know, with, with JPL and, and, and a number of businesses that, that have really contributed to the culture and, and the talent base. You know, there's a lot of um, really fantastic uh, scientists, researchers, engineers uh, to help you start problems and, and to really go after the hard things. And I might say, too, that we may say, oh, well, then L.A. is so unique and so special that what can we learn from L.A.? But at the same time, I think that L.A. has been a challenging place up until now to really foster uh, a more coordinated uh, movement. Uh, a lot of this stuff has been coming up from the grassroots, and it's really only recently that you feel like you get a lot of momentum around the tech and uh, hopefully now around the manufacturing with the Make It in LA initiative, and the mayor has been incredibly, uh, mayor of LA has been incredibly uh, proactive in working with the tech community and uh, cutting business taxes by 16% and uh, really creating open government, uh, open data, so enabling uh, support of the different, um, the residents of, the, of LA. In fact, uh, Lillian Corral and, um, and Jean Holm from the office are here as well. So um, it's, it's been really, it, it's a real, it takes both the grassroots and also more efforts that are more regional. A LA River is a huge thing that's just happening. You know, so I think it takes both sort of top and bottom to come together. Yeah, uh, the LA River for people who don't, know about or just like think of it as a joke on uh, late night TV, uh, is uh, being redeveloped in sort of an astonishing way as, in, as an open space, as a recreational space, as a sort of due center of Los Angeles. And it, it, it goes on for 40 miles. And the, um, there are a million plans, some of them from uh, you know, the visionary architect Frank Gehry, and it's something I think we're all looking forward to experiencing over the next 40 years. Definitely. I think um, Los Angeles is going through a renaissance right now. So I think people from all over the country are moving to LA, um, across the arts, across technology. And I think it really is a hub for creativity right now. Um, I think one of the questions we're exploring is like, why is it a hub for creativity? Why has everybody, has everybody gone there? I mean, speaking from my own experience, I think it's, um, it's just a, an amazing place to dedicate yourself to something. Um, there are so many resources, there's um, such a diverse workforce, like amazing people coming from entertainment, from technology, and it really is, like you were saying, the intersection of all those things. Um, I'm just wondering, what do you guys think are some other reasons why LA is experiencing this renaissance? I think that, you know, one of the, one of the reasons what I think that um, experiences this renaissance is the collaboration that's happening in, in Los Angeles, from government to private to the nonprofit world. Uh, I remember when we when we had just get, got started with uh, our nonprofit, we started at a Starbucks, and then you know even as small as a Starbucks, letting us use Wi-Fi, right, and being able to say, you know, bring ten kits into Starbucks, and we don't care if you use our Wi-Fi all day and learn how to code and learn how to develop apps. I think that's the beauty of LA. It's a, it's becoming this community 
of um, entrepreneurs and innovators, right? They're, they're, they care for their communities. For us, it was how do we use social innovations and address the most pressing issues in, in South LA. And when we were first starting and told people, look, we're ending the, uh, the school to prison pipeline, not only did corporations, but not only did, non did um, foundations like the, the Reardon Foundation jump on board or the Durfee Foundation or LA 2050 jumped on board and said, well, let's help this cause. It's important that LA has a very good workforce in the future. So I think that collaboration again, that is becoming from all sectors and is helping understand that there's talent in South LA, there's talent all over Los Angeles, whether, whether it's in the Valley or in, in downtown, we're, we're, we're willing to nurture that talent and we're willing to bring up and foster that talent as a community in LA. I think LA is, I think what we're trying to say is LA is very friendly to new business. I felt that way moving from New York. I was like, I'm never gonna get this done in New York. I have to move to LA. I'm really excited that just a couple of weeks ago we opened this new portal, the LA Business Portal, where you literally in one day you can register at all levels of government. You can register a new business, and that's really? completely yeah. So it's completely in response to the the um, sort of requests from the people and the businesses, and then uh, and that's what. Mayor Garcetti has been so good at is to listen and then apply the technology. So having a chief technology officer, um, having this entrepreneurs in residence program that serves as a, a, the liaison between City Hall and the entrepreneurial community, which is really taking things to the next level. Because these sort of things take it so long. It's like this flywheel. And it just, and, and you forget that it, an innovation ecosystem doesn't happen overnight. And one as big as LA is just, it's a long time coming, I think. <laughs> I mean, L.A. seems to be a, a very friendly place uh, for, you know, what I, what I call uh, entry-level capitalism. Oh, yeah. That, you know, if you're, if say, if say you're a restaurant and you're opening in, you know, New York or D.C. and you have a $6 million build-out, the restaurant, it may have your name over the door, but it's not your restaurant. It's, mm -hmm. It belongs to the people who have financed you and if you're not making them happy they can boot you out whereas in Los Angeles it's very easy to open a place in a mini mall very or or rent a truck that and have yourself in the heart of the the commercial city and be something that people really want to go to but not invest very much money at all and then your business will either grow and you'll be happy and successful or it won't grow and you'll try something else which I think is you know the beauty of what happens in the US. I, I think also LA that you well I wish you that unique I'm sure other cities are very much like LA but one of the things I like to say about LA is that um, we keep it real I mean we, we're real with each other right like that's right LA we're real with each other yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm that's what I like to say about LA you know, we, I remember when we had to do a, a hackathon. We call our hackathon Hustle and Code, right? Hustle and Code. And we wanted to do it in Watts. And people used to tell us from Santa Monica, said, hey, come over to Santa Monica and do the hackathon over here. Or we'll bring your kids to downtown LA. And we would go to companies. Some companies said, well, you know, we're kind of afraid to go to Watts, right? We're kind of afraid to go into Nickerson Gardens. They were keeping it real from their end. I can understand if some bloods are in Nickerson Gardens and they're a little afraid of it. But we say, you know what, if you really want to invest in your community and you really want to help us, come to Watts. And then we saw that collaboration, we saw that uniqueness that they said, let's go to Watts. And they came to the Nickerson Gardens and we were able to serve 150 kids. But these tech companies, right, were coming into Watts and in Nickerson Garden and say we're willing to help. So I think that we got to give LA credit for keeping it real. Like we're going to solve problems and real problems in LA. And we are. We have to keep it real with each other. Folks, we got to be careful. We're gonna end up like er we're gonna get more and more people coming to LA. <laughs> it's still almost affordable. <laughs> um, so one one of the th I, I'm not sure how relevant this is to people on the panel, but uh, the uh, fifteen dollar minimum wage is coming it's very up. Very relevant for us. <laughs> and uh, how how do you see that affecting what you do? Well, I personally am very excited for it. Um, I want, I think that there's a, um, a lot of consumers like to buy things and, they, and they're looking for the best possible deal. And I don't think they necessarily realize that there are human lives behind all the products that are being made. Um, and I think it's important to pay people a living wage. So I think 
Um, I'm pretty sure $15 is close to the living wage in LA. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm doing a call in from the audience, but yes, and that's and that's really where we should be. So you know, to me, it's a very exciting thing, and I'm I'm happy about it. Is is that affecting you at all? You know, I, I, I think all of these things affect everyone. I think from, from a workforce standpoint, you know, in, in a high-tech sector, I think it's, it's, it's a different position. Um, you know, but, but uh, you know, particularly what you're talking about is, is how uh, corporations and, and, and government and, uh, have to think about the best interest of people in general and solve these problems in a bigger way. Um, I think that there's awful, often a temptation for uh, people to look in, and see the strengths or weaknesses of government or the strengths and weaknesses of corporations. Um, and, and especially in either the other, sometimes they try to route around each other and, and neither gets better when, when that happens. And I think, I think if you focus at how you can collaborate and uh, kind of make the legislations that's gonna help both, uh, that's really the only way to, to do it in, a long, uh, in the long term. And I, and I say all that because in, in LA in particular, I feel like the local government's gonna done a really good job of that, you know, bridging um, the the gap between the the multi billion dollar aerospace companies that have been there for decades, and and I'd say the the independent film production or or these amazing restaurants that that have also been there for decades, but but finding and attracting new entrepreneurs, new companies to come to L.A. and and fill in the gap between the two um, can't be done with just government, can't be done with just companies. Um, you'll never solve the biggest problems uh, if you try to route around one or the other. You've got to find a way for them to collaborate. Um, and I think that that's, that's one of the things that, that LA's done really well. And it's, it's not because of any unique uh, geographic component or, or, or demographic component of LA. I think that's something that, that cities um, around the world could, could uh, find ways to improve and, and, and see some of the same successes that LA is. I think, if you, if you know what I'm saying, um, I think that... Um, for for in terms of the fifteen dollar wage, I think that it's it's great for the economy uh, overall. I think that what we we've seen what we've seen at this point is that it's going to make our economy stronger. And it's going to make um, better jobs. and It's also going to bring new money to the cities that don't usually get um, an a equitable financial progress that we see in the city right at this point. Uh, what I mean by that is that at this point, I remember one kid who graduated from a program and went over to Stanford came back and got a job in tech and came back to Watts and bought a house in Watts. I think that in itself is going to start bringing the value of properties up because people can now afford maybe something like that, especially if they come communities that can't, that are not getting paid that much. The, the average um, living income, yearly income in, in Watts at this point, about $10,000 to $15,000 a year, right? So if we can start, you know, investing more in the kids and investing more in communities that are learning how to code and design, do critical thinking, and be able to be progressive about, about business and new, and new business, that's only going to make our city and the nation stronger. So I think that's, um, we got to think about creative ways of continue collaborating across sectors. It's a common refrain in different cities that, oh, it's too expensive here, et cetera. And I think if you think about it, uh, the actors don't move to LA because it's cheap. They, they move there because it's the place to be. So I think that it's really incumbent upon us to make the community and the, the reasons for being there and to innovate in that place uh, worthwhile to be in that place. And we also need to make sure that we're um, equitable and thinking about equity so that it's not just flowing to the top. Um, you know, perfect example is uh, Carl Kanai. I interviewed him on my podcast, The Art of Manufacturing. Uh, he's, uh, you know, original kind of pioneer of urban hip hop from 30 years ago almost. He's uh, relaunching his brand domestically. He's doing all of his manufacturing in LA for his domestic brand, like when he started. And he talks about how it's critical for his success because he has to be at the forefront of fashion. And so two week turnaround time as opposed to waiting for something to show up from a ship and maybe it's what you wanted. Um, it's, it, so actually making it a, a competitive advantage to make things and to innovate locally is really, that, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that that happens. And the, and the office of the mayor, um, the office of the mayor has been very, very good about understanding the need of the community in terms of providing jobs, especially in technology. I think for us, um, having discussion with the office of the mayor uh, that there are jobs in technology for kids. So once once these kids are able to code and design and create apps, and then we're able to put them in 
in companies like Snapchats, like Tinder, right? Tinder and others, and other companies, the more majority in other companies in Santa Monica. Because I think that that's that's what's going to make the city even even better than it is now. And I think we can be a national model for for the rest of the country, so they can see how they can train their workforce, right, in places where you're not looking at talent that yet. But then that for workforce can go over to companies that can serve very well. So I would say that the mayor is, is, has a vision of how how to cross reference that and collaborate. You know, with communities don't have those high paying jobs, but how do we get them to to companies that have paying jobs? I think um, another another aspect is, um, you know, if you have to pay more money per hour, um, immediately a lot of businesses are going to say, we need to go somewhere else, right? I need to go to Nevada or offshore or whatever to manufacture. And this is like a really interesting place um, for us in the sense that it requires us to innovate, right? So we have to innovate. We have to become more efficient. We have to invest more in technology um, and in better processes um, in order to make it okay to to pay people $15 an hour or more um, and be competitive in the market, which is, I think, something that we're working on um, internally is how do we pay people more, have them earn more money, and also be more efficient, which is something that I think, at least in the apparel industry, hasn't been happening very often uh, because it's just easier to you know, send it overseas or somewhere else to get made. Uh, You've been saying something, you said something interesting in a phone conversation last week on how you thought um, Los Angeles may be the best manufacturing center in the United States because of the particular skills that people have. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, I, if I remember correctly, we were talking about how uh, Los Angeles is solving some of the hardest problems um, in the world, uh, especially you know, in, the, in the world of technology, um, you know, where, where Daiquiri's at. Um, if, you, if you look at kind of the distribution of companies solving problems, there's, there's a lot, say, up in Silicon Valley solving, um, you know, a, a lot of the same, you know, problems. But, but when you're actually trying to, say, have commercial rocket launch capability, you're doing it in L.A., right? If you're, uh, you know, if I don't mind saying, if you're making an augmented reality device to empower workers, you know, which is hard, it requires computer vision, it requires, you know, machine learning, it requires uh, holographic display technologies. You know, we're solving that in LA, the talent's there in LA, the support's there in LA, the infrastructure's there. Um, you know, we, we have office, an office in Silicon Valley, we have offices around the world to, to tap into other talent pools, but, but LA was, was where we started the company, and, and, and I think that that really helped us grow, helped us to get to the point where we're at today. Um, and, it, and it's because you've got this diversity of skill set and, and, and these people that, um, you know, can help solve those problems. And, and, and let's face it, you know, LA's a great, great place to live and, and, and people uh, move from around the world to, to, to come there. Yeah, the heart, you know, one of the, again, one of the component or the beauty of LA that I, that I enjoy when I talk about when we started at Starbucks, it's like when I went to people and I said, look, there's, there's one of three young black men who are going into jails, right? And there's one out of six that are going, of Latinos that are going to jail. People were very welcoming to that and saying, hey, how do we help you solve that major, that major problem? And what I, what I discovered is that a LA, what it's doing is investing those dollars and taking risk. I think LA is a city that likes to take risk, it's willing to take a risk at this point. So I think that the more we do what he's saying in terms of bringing new ways of, of innovating and, and bringing new ways of investing in those, in those hard issues that we want to address in LA will continue being competitive around the world. I think that uh, Yale, in the last question, pointed out a really important aspect is, you know, whether it's because of salaries, whether it's because of, get, you know, really getting the most out, out of your people, having, having them reach their potential, you want to invest in the technologies that'll do that. Um, you know, we love augmented reality, that's one way to do that. You know, I, I, think, I think people, uh, at, at, at any level or, or, or in any job, um, they, they look at what they do, they look at their work as, as a way to leave their mark in the world, right? I, I really don't, do not believe anybody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm gonna go do a bad job today, right? I'm gonna go suck at my job. I think people are rewarded by it. People, people do what they do, hopefully, like we do, because they're passionate about it. They wanna get up, they wanna, they wanna leave a mark in the world. And, and if we can give them technology, to do that, to, to, to make them better, to, to, to help them to reach their potential. I think that that's, that's something that, that will help them in that job, 
it'll help the employer, but it also help them in their life, really, you know, to, to, to redefine what they think that they can accomplish in life. You know, they, that's what we do with augmented reality, knowledge transfer, you know, I, I put on a smart helmet, I, I can look at, at um, you know, a piece of equipment like a, a, um, a wind turbine that I've never worked on before, and, and it can show me one of 600 different work instructions to, to repair that wind turbine, right? And, and so really, think about in the future, whether it's you know, other technologies or whether it's augmented reality, what, what if you could put on a device, a pair of glasses, and know how to do any job, right? Isn't that the worker that you would want? And I, I guarantee you that, that investing that type of technology in a worker, that's the type of job that they want too, right? And so if we think about those technologies and, and using them to empower the workers, you know, the worker will be able to do more and, and you know, the, the employer gets the benefit as well. It's, it's definitely a huge win-win when, when we invest in the workers. I think um, technology is going to be the way that we make manufacturing great again in America. Um, so I think um, continuing to innovate in those areas will make it so that we can pay people, you know, better than a living wage. Um, and also manufacture domestically. But it requires, I think, technology, um, skilled workforce, um, community, community <laughs> food. <laughs> you know, I have to say that we, we think of L.A. as being Hollywood, and we're great storytellers, but the one thing that we've done a terrible job of storytelling is about what's actually happening in L.A., <laughs> It's it's true. It's been until fairly recently that p p um, L.A. has been described by people who will sort of like parachute in, stay a couple of weeks at the Beverly Hills Hotel, write about what they can drive to in 20 minutes, and that's their version of Los Angeles. But that's not the Los Angeles that any of us live in at people all. People are starting to admit that they like it. <laughs> mm. I have a lot of friends moving to L.A. <laughs> LA is the new Brooklyn, right? <laughs> we are our own city. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then LA has been the new Brooklyn for probably 75 years. You could just ask Vince Scully, right, who just uh, broadcast his last game yesterday after starting in Brooklyn 67 years ago. I am um, actually when I was thinking when I was living in New York and deciding where to move the business, it was either Brooklyn or Los Angeles. Those were the two options. Um, and it was I remember I had this really funny moment where not that I'm down on New York, I lived there for six years, but I had this really funny moment where the UPS driver screamed at me about taking the box or something like that in New York City, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm moving to LA. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it is a very business friendly city and, and and you're happy every day when you wake up there <laughs> which is not inconsiderable i think it's probably time to wind up the panel thanks very much for being on the lawn and anybody have any last statements no thank you so much thank for you. inviting me let's make it manufacturing is uh, sexy yeah. <laughs> i have one last thing to say um, if you're on, on, on the website, go to urbantechs.com. If you want to help build the next future generation of technology entrepreneurs in L.A., um, don't forget to donate. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and once, once you do and become an expert programmer, don't forget to apply at Daiquiri. We have open positions. So. We are going to. <laughs> Visit makeitinla.org. And latimes.com. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.